this is the Edexcel GCSE 9 to 1 maths paper 3 from the higher papers and this paper is a calculated paper from the 2023 series. Question number 1. Part A. Simplify m squared to the power of 3. Well here we have a power raised to another power so we would multiply the powers. So we would have m to the power of 2 times by 3 leaving us with m to the 6. Part b, simplify x to the 5 multiplied by x to the 8. Well here we have the same base, x, and we are multiplying, so we would have to add the powers. So we have x to the power of 5 plus 8, leaving us with x to the 13. Part c, we have to expand 4p multiplied by p squared plus 3p. 4p multiplied by p squared is 4p cubed. 4p times by 3p is 12p squared. So we end up with 4p cubed plus 12p squared. Question number two. Johnny wants to know how much coffee he will need for 800 people at a meeting, each person who drinks coffee will drink two cups of coffee. 10.6 grams of coffee is needed for each cup of coffee. Johnny assumes 68% of the people will drink coffee. Part A. Using this assumption, we have to work out the amount of coffee Johnny needs. Give your answer correct to the nearest gram. To begin with, we can find out how many people drink coffee. We have 68% of 800, and if we Work this out, we have 68 over 100 multiplied by 800, which is 544. So 544 people drink coffee. And we know that each person drinks two cups of coffee. So the cups drunk will be 544 multiplied by two, which is 1,088. And we know that 10.6 grams of coffee is needed for each cup of coffee. So the coffee needed, we've got the 1,088 multiplied by the 10.6. And if we work this out, we end up with 11,532.8 grams, which is approximately 11,532 grams. To the nearest gram. Part B. Johnny's assumption is wrong. 72% of the people will drink coffee. How does this affect your answer to part A? Well, if we have 72% of the people drinking coffee, we would have more cups of coffee required and therefore we would require more grams. So the amount will need to be more. Question number three. ACF and ADG are straight lines. BCD and EFG are parallel lines. We have to show that triangle ACD is isosceles. Give a reason for each stage of your working. The first thing we can do is find out the angle BCA shown here. And this angle is equal to this angle because we've got corresponding angles. So this angle is equal to the angle EFC, which is 125 degrees. And that's because we have corresponding angles, which are equal. We can now find out what this angle here is, the angle ACD, using angles on a straight line. So the angle ACD is equal to 180, subtract that 125, which is 55. And that's because angles on a straight line sum to 180. We can now find out what this angle here is, again using the fact that angles on a straight line sum to 180. So the angle ADC is equal to 180. Subtract this 110, which is 70 degrees. So we have 70 degrees shown here. And that's because angles on a straight line sum to 180. So I can now find out what this missing angle A is. So the angle A, that's equal to 
180 subtract 70 subtract 55, which is 55. And that's because we've got angles in a triangle with sum to 180. Which means the angle ACD and DAC are both equal to 55, so we've got the base angles in an isosceles which are equal, which means we've got an isosceles triangle. Question number four. It takes 14 hours for five identical pumps to fill a water tank. How many hours would it take four of these pumps to fill another water tank of the same size? Well, it takes 14 hours to fill five pumps. Let's find out how many hours it will take to fill one pump. Well, for one pump, it will take five times longer. So 14 multiplied by five is 70. So for one pump, it takes 70 hours. What we want to do is find out how long it will take to fill four pumps. So it will take four times less than the 70 hours. So 70 divided by four is 17.5. So we have 17.5 hours. Question number five. A and B are numbers such that A is equal to two squared times three to the four times seven, and B is equal to three squared times seven squared. Part A, we have to find the highest common factor of A and B. Well, I'm going to write A as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 7. And B, I'm going to write as 3 times 3 times 7 times 7. If we think about what's common to both, well, we've got a 3 which is common to both, this other 3 which is common to both, and this 7 which is common to both. So to find the highest common factor, we have 3 multiplied by the 3 multiplied by the 7, which is 63. So the highest common factor is 63. We now have to find out the lowest common multiple of a and b. Well, we've got the 3, the 3 and the 7, which are common to both. But then what we need to multiply is what's remaining. So we multiply by this 2, then we multiply by this 2, then we multiply by this 3, then we multiply by this 3, and then we multiply by this 7. And if we work out what this is equal to, we have 3 times 3 times 7 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7, which is 15,876. Question number six, lava flows from a volcano at a constant rate of 11.9 meters cubed per second. How many days does it take for 67,205,600 meters cubed of lava to flow from the volcano? Give your answer correct to the nearest day. So for the time, we've got the volume divided by the rate. And if we work this out, we have the following we have five million six hundred and forty seven thousand five hundred and twenty nine point four one two seconds so what I need to do is find out what this is in days so to work out what this is in days I need to divide this by well, I've got 24 hours in the day, and if I multiply by 60 to convert that into minutes, and then times by 60 again to convert it into seconds, this will tell me the amount of days. So, if I divide this by 24 times 60 times 60, we get 65.36, etc. days. So we have 65 days. Question number seven. Here is the graph of y equals x squared subtract 2x subtract 2. For part A, we have to write down the coordinates of the turning point on the graph of y equals x squared subtract 2x subtract 2. Well, the turning point is here. And this has got coordinates 1, negative 3. Part B, we have to write down an estimate for one of the roots of x squared subtract 2x subtract 2 equals 0. Well, we need to find where the graph equals zero. And the graph equals zero here and here. So the 
values of those, we've got the negative 0.7 and the 2.7. We only need to write down one of these, so let's write down the negative 0.7. Question number eight. A solid cuboid is made from metal. The metal has a density of nine grams per centimeters cubed. The volume of the cuboid is 72 centimeters cubed. You have to work out the mass of the cuboid. So the mass is equal to nine grams per centimeters cubed multiplied by the volume, 72 centimeters cubed. Nine times 72 is 648. So the mass is 648 grams. Question number nine. Some people were asked if they wanted a new television. 70% of the people said yes. 80% of the people who said yes wanted a television with a large screen. What percentage of the people asked said they wanted a television with a large screen? So we've got the 70 people who said yes, and then we've got 80% of those 70% who want a large screen. So we've got 80% of 70% which we need to work out. So we have 0.8 times by 0.7, which is 0.56. So the percentage we require is 56%. Question number 10. ABD is a triangle. C is the point on BD. We have to work out the length of DC to one decimal place. So I need to work out this length here. And first of all, I can work out this length by finding out what AC is. And I can do that using simple trigonometry. So AC, that will equal, well here I've got the hypotenuse, I'm working out the opposite to the angle, so I use sine. So I've got 6.8 multiplied by the sine of 41. And if I work out what that is, it turns out we get 4.46 etc. We'll leave that here. So now that I know what this length is, I need to find out what DC is. So I've got the adjacent and the opposite, so I need to use tan. So I've got the tan of 55 equals opposite, 4.46, etc., divided by dc, the opposite. So I need to find out what dc is. So I can do that by doing the 4.46, etc., divided by the tan of 55. So I get 3.1 to one decimal place. Question 11. The table shows some information about the heights of a group of adults. Part A. On the grid, we have to draw a box plot for the information in the table. Well, we've got this least height of 169. We've got the lower quartile of 174. The median of 177. The upper quartile as 180. The greatest height as 186. So. Completing our box plot, we have the box plot shown here. The box plot shows the distribution of the heights of a group of teenagers. We have to compare the distribution of the heights of the adults with the distribution of the heights of the teenagers. Well, there's two things we can compare. We can compare the median and we can also compare the interquartile range. And what you will find then is the median for the heights of adults is greater than the median for the heights of teenagers and the interquartile range of the heights of adults is similar to the interquartile range of the heights of teenagers. Question number 12. We have to show that x subtract 1 multiplied by x plus 3 multiplied by x subtract 5 can be written in the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d where a, b and c are integers. Well, We've got x subtract 1 times x plus 3 times x subtract 5. And what this will be equivalent to, well, I've got this x subtract 1, and then I'm multiplying this by x plus 3 times x subtract 5. Now, x plus 3 times x subtract 5 is x squared subtract 2x subtract 15. So now I need to multiply each of these terms together. So I've got x times x cubed squared, which is x cubed, x times negative 2x, which is negative 2x squared, x times negative 15x, which is negative 15x, negative 1 times x squared, which is negative x squared, negative 1 times negative 2x, which is positive 2x, negative 1 times negative 15, which is 15. So let's simplify this. Well, I've got the x cubed, then I've got negative 2x squared, subtract another x squared, so that's negative 3x squared, then I've got negative 15x plus 2x, that's negative 13x, and then I've got the 15. So we have expanded and simplified 
this expression. Question number 13, an expression for the nth term of the sequence of triangular numbers is n times n plus 1 over 2. We have to prove that the sum of any two consecutive triangular numbers is a square number. So, I need to add two numbers together because I've got the sum. Now, I've got this first number, which is given by n times by n plus 1 over 2. The next triangular number, well, I need to add the following. I've got this n, and then I add 1 to it. Then I've got this n plus 1, and then I add 1 to it, and then I divide by 2. So here we've got the sum of any two consecutive triangular numbers, and we need to show that this sum is a square number. So I've got this n times by n plus 1 over 2, and the n plus 1 times n plus 1 plus 1 over 2 can be simplified to n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 2. Now I've got this common denominator of 2. So on the top I've got the n times by n plus 1 plus the n plus 1 times n plus 2. So let's simplify the top. I've got n times n plus 1, which is n squared plus n, and then I've got the n plus 1 times the n plus 2, that's n squared plus 3n plus 2, and I'm dividing that by 2. So if I simplify the top, n squared plus n squared is 2n squared, n plus 3n is 4n, and then I've got this plus 2, and I'm dividing all this by 2. So each term in the numerator is even, and I'm dividing that by 2, so I end up with n squared plus 2n plus 1, which is a perfect square, which we can write as n plus 1 all squared, which is a square number. And that's what we wanted to show. Question number 14. OAB is a triangle. OBC is a sector of a circle with centre O. You have to calculate the area of OBC to three significant figures. Well, if I take a look at this triangle, I can find out what OB is, which will be the same as OC because they are both radii. And we can find out what OB is using the cosine rule because we've got a length, a length and an angle in between. So OB squared is equal to the 6 squared plus the 9 squared. Subtract 2 multiplied by 6 multiplied by the 9 multiplied by the cosine of 35. So if I work this out, I've got 6 squared plus 9 squared subtract 2 times 6, times 9, times the cosine of 35, which is 28.53, etc. So now that I know what OB squared is, I can find out what OB is by square rooting, and you will find we end up with 5.34, etc., which means the radius is 5.341, etc. So OC is 5.341, etc. So to find the area of this sector, OBC, we've got our angle, 80 over 360. So that's the fraction of a full circle. And then we we'll multiply this by pi r squared. So I've got pi multiplied by 5.341, etc. squared. So if I work out what this is, I have 80 divided by 360 times pi times by this radius squared which is 19.9 centimetres squared. Question number 15, part here, we have to factorise a squared, subtract b squared. Here we've got a difference of two squares, so we end up with a plus b multiplied by a subtract b. Part b, we have to show that 2 to the 40 subtract 1 is the product of two consecutive odd numbers. Now here, we would have to use a difference of two squares. Somehow I need to write the 2 to the 40 in the form a squared and the b squared is 1, which means b is 1. So the 2 to the 40 subtract 1, I'm going to write this as following. Well, the 2 to the 40 I can write as 2 to the 20 squared because when I multiply the powers, 20 times 2 is 40 and then I subtract the 1. So writing this as a difference of 2 squares, we've got 2 to the 20 plus 1 multiplied by 2 to the 20 subtract 1. Now, 
2 to the 20, that's going to be an even number. So we've got an even plus 1, which is odd. And the even number, subtract 1, is also odd. So 2 to the 20 plus 1 and 2 to the 20 subtract 1 are both odd. Which means we have the product of two odd numbers. Question 16. On the grid, we have to enlarge triangle T by scale factor negative 2 with center of enlargement negative 2, negative 2. Now, negative 2, negative 2 is here, so here is our center of enlargement. Now, from this point to here, we go 4, so we need to go 8 in the opposite direction, so we've got 2, 4, 6, 8 in the opposite direction, as shown here. From here to here, well, we go 3 this way, then 3 up, so I need to go 6 this way, and then 6 up, and for this point, you can see we go 5 this way and 3 up, so I need to go 10 this way, and then 6 up. So I now need to join the points up to form a triangle, giving us this triangle here. Question 17 here is a distance time graph. We've got the distance in meters and the time in seconds. You have to find an estimate for the gradient of the graph at time 2.5 seconds. You must show how you get your answer. Well, first of all, let's draw a tangent at 2.5 five seconds, like the one we see here. Now the change in x from here to here is 3.2 and the change in y from here to here is 56. So to work out the gradient we've got 56 meters divided by 3.2 seconds. So if I work out what this is equal to We get 17.5 meters per second. Part B, what does the gradient of the graph represent? Well here we've got units of meters per second, which means it represents the velocity. Question 18. A solid frustrum is made by removing a small cone from a large cone, as shown in the diagram. The slant height of the small cone is 6 centimeters, the slant height of the large cone is 10 centimeters, the radius of the base of the large cone is 3 centimeters. We have to work out the total surface area of the frustrum to three significant figures. But given that the curved surface area of a cone is pi rl. Now we've got this small cone and we've got this big cone. I don't know the radius of the small cone but I can work that out using a scale factor. My scale factor is equal to 10 divided by 6, which is 5 over 3. So to work out the radius of the small cone, well, I've got this 3, and I need to divide this by 5 over 3, and if I work this out, I get 1.8 centimetres. So now I can work out the curved surface area of the large cone, the curved surface area of the small cone and subtracting them will give me the curved surface area of the frustrum. So the curved surface area of the frustrum that's equal to 3 times pi times 10 which is the large cone and I subtract from this 1.8 times pi times 6 which is the small cone and if I work this out I end up with 19.2 pi. So for the top face here, well, I've got the circle, so I've got pi times 1.8 squared, which is 3.24 pi. Then I've got this bottom larger face, which is pi times 3 squared, which is 9 pi. So for the total surface area, I've got the curved surface area of the frustrum 
19.2 pi, add on to this 3.24 pi, and add on to this 9 pi. So I've got 19.2 plus 3.24 plus 9, and then I multiply this by pi, well, I've got 31.44 pi. which is 98.8 centimeters squared. Question number 19, Sana needs to draw the graph of y equals three to the x, where x is in between zero and four. She draws the graph on the grid, and that's shown here. We have to write down one thing Sana has done wrong. Well, clearly the first thing we can see is she started off at the origin and the graph passes through 0, 1, because when x is 0, we have 3 to the power of 0, which is 1. So it should cross the y-axis at the point 1, not 0. So the curve should go through 0, 1, not 0, 0. Question number 20, we have to prove algebraically that 0 0.123 recurring can be written as 61 over 495. So if I let x equal the 0 0.12323, 2, 3, 3, etc, because we've got two digits repeating, I'm going to multiply this by 100, leaving me with 100x equals 12.323232, etc. Now if I subtract these, 100x take away x is 99x, and then I've got the 12.323233, etc. Subtract the 0 0.12. 323233, three, three, etc. Well, as you can see, these all disappear, so I'm left with 12.3 subtract 0 0.1, which is 12.2. So 99x is equal to 12.2. I want to find out what 1x is, so I need to divide both sides by 99, leaving me with x equals 122 over 990. And if I divide top and bottom by 2, end up with 61 over 495, which is what I wanted to show. Question 21, we have to solve 1 over x plus 4 plus 3 over 2 subtract 2x equals 1. Well, the first thing I can do is write the left-hand side over a common denominator of x plus 4 times 2 subtract 2x. So on the top, I've got the 1 multiplied by the 2 subtract 2x, and then I'm adding on to this 3, multiplied by x plus 4, and this is all equal to 1. So, if I tidy this up, I've got 1 times 2, which is 2, 1 times negative 2x, which is negative 2x, 3 times x, which is 3x, 3 times 4, which is 12, and I'm dividing this by x plus 4 times 2, subtract 2x. The result of this is 1. So, if I multiply through by x plus 4 times 2, subtract 2x, I end up with 2 subtract 2x plus 3x plus 12 equals 1 multiplied by the x plus 4 times by the 2 subtract 2x. So let's tidy all this up. Well, I've got negative 2x plus 3x, which is just x. Then I've got 2 plus 12, which is 14. And on the right-hand side, I've got x times by 2, which is 2x. x times negative 2x, which is negative 2x squared. 4 times 2, which is 8. 4 times negative 2x, which is negative 8x. So if I tidy all this up, I get x plus 14 equals negative 2x squared, subtract 6x plus 8. And if I take everything over to one side, I end up with 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 equals 0. And if I factorise, I have 2x plus 3 times x plus 2 equals 0, which means x is equal to negative 3 over 2, or x is equal to negative 2. Question 22, given that the vector a times 2, 6 plus b times 8, 2 is parallel to the vector 13, 6, we have to find an expression for b in terms of a. Well, I've got a times 2, 6, which is 2a, 6a, and I'll add on to this b times 8, 2, which is 8b, 2b, and this is parallel to the vector 13, 6, so let's just set them equal to each other to find out what a and b are and see how they're related. So if I set this sum equal to 13, 6, I can write down an equation 
I've got 2a plus 8b equals 13. I'll call that equation 1. And I've got 6a plus 2b equals 6. I'll call this equation 2. Now what I'm going to do with equation 2 is multiply it by 4 to get the b's the same. So I've got 6a times 4, which is 24a, 2b times 4, which is 8b, and 6 times 4, which is 24. I'll call this equation 3. And if I do 3 subtract 1, that means the b's will cancel. So 24a subtract 2a is 22a, 24 subtract 13 is 11, so 22a is 11, which means a is a half. Let's substitute this back into equation 1. So we've got 2 times by a half plus 8b equals 13. 2 times a half is 1, so I've got 1 plus 8b equals 13. So 8b is 12, which means b is equal to 3 over 2. So if I multiply a by 3, I get b, which means b is equal to 3a. Question 23. A circle has equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. The point p with coordinates negative 3, 4 lies on the circle. Alex says that the tangent to the circle at p crosses the x-axis at negative 8, 0. Is Alex correct? You must show how you get your answer. So I've got this circle with this tangent, and I've got this point p with coordinates negative 3, 4. So the first thing I can do is find out the gradient of this radius to help me find the gradient of the tangent because I know that the radius and the tangent are perpendicular to each other. So the gradient of the radius is negative 4 over 3, which means I can find the gradient of the tangent by using the negative reciprocal. So the gradient of the tangent is equal to negative 1 over this negative 4 over 3, which is 3 over 4. So now that I know the gradient of the tangent, I can find the equation of the straight line using y equals mx plus c. So I've got y equals 3 over 4x plus c as my equation of the straight line. Now if I use this point of negative 3, 4, I can find out what c is. So I've got 4 equals 3 quarters times negative 3 plus c, which means c is equal to 25 over 4, which means my straight line is given by y equals 3 over 4x plus 25 over 4. And with this, I can find out where it crosses the x-axis by setting y equal to 0. So when y is equal to 0, I've got 0 equals 3 quarters x plus 25 over 4. And if I multiply 3 by 4, 0 equals 3x plus 25, which means x is equal to negative 25 over 3, which means it crosses the x-axis at negative 25 over 3, 0, which is this point here. Question number 24. There is a total of y counters in the box. There are x pink counters and 5 blue counters in the box. The rest of the counters are green. The ratio x to y is equal to 1 to 3. Freda takes at random two counters from the box. We have to find in terms of x an expression for the probability that Freda takes two counters of the same colour. We have to give our answer in the form as a fraction ax squared plus bx plus c over dx squared plus ex where a, b, c, d, and e are integers. Well, I've got this x to y equals 1 to 3. I can rewrite this as y over x equals 3 over 1, which means y is equal to 3x. Now, if I know that there's y counters in total, y is equal to 3x, which means 3x is the total. Now, I've got pink, which is equal to x. I've got blue, which is equal to 5. The rest are green, which means green is equal to y, the total, subtract x which is pink, subtract 5 which is blue, leaving me with 3x, because that's what y is, subtract x, subtract 5, which is 2x, subtract 5. So that's how many green we've got. Now what we want is the probability of getting two of the same colour. And we don't replace. So I've got two of the same colour, so I need a pink followed by another pink, or a blue followed by another blue, or a green followed by another green. So in terms of pink, well, I've got 3x in total, and of those, x is pink. Now, if I take 1 out, that means I'm left with 3x subtract 1 altogether. And if I take out a pink from this, that means I have x subtract 1 pink. Next, I've got 5 over the 3x for blue, and if I take... 1 out, I'm left with 3x subtract 1, and I've got 1 less blue, so I've got 4. Then I've got green, so I've got 3x in total, and then I've got the 2x subtract 5, 
which are green. And if I take one out, I've got 3x subtract 1 remaining. And then I've got 2x subtract 5 subtract another 1, which is 2x subtract 6. So now I need to simplify all this. So I've got this common denominator of 3x times by 3x subtract 1. And then here I've got x times x subtract 1 plus 5 times by 4 plus 2x subtract 5 times 2x subtract 6. So let's simplify all this. Well, I've got x times x, which is x squared, x times negative 1, which is negative 1x. Then I've got 5 times by 4, which is 20. And here I've got 4x squared subtract 12x subtract 10x plus 30 over 9x squared subtract 3x. So if I simplify all this, I get 5x squared subtract 23x plus 50 over 9x squared subtract 3.